like new Schwanstein Castle overseas. Amazing. It yeah, it's amazing. Absolutely. That's what I keep thinking about, trying to compare it. But this place is beautiful. Yeah, it's amazing. paper version and they have an app. But we're headed to the second floor to watch the video to learn more about it before we continue on. Right. And I'm headed to whatever floor has a bathroom. What'd you say? <laughs> Where's that at? There's lots of ways to get to Bolt. There's like tours, Viator has a ton of tours where you can ride a boat. And it's like miles and miles of waterways and you can get on the, one of those. Um, Viator.com has a bunch of those. You can also just come to the yacht house or the Bolt Castle and um, this was like $15.50 each and we got a shuttle across from the yacht house to the castle and now we're gonna do this tour and um, we're gonna take you along. It's a beautiful day. That's the yacht house, and that's where we parked over there, and then we rode this shuttle over here. Now we're going to tour the castle, and then ride back there, and then actually tour the yacht house. It's two separate tours. You can do just one. You can do both. Either way. Here we go. Come on. Um, have restored this castle without the use of taxpayer dollars, which I think is pretty incredible, uh, just through donations and everything else. And this place looks beautiful. Yeah, so part that what we paid today, the fifteen fifty to get in, it all goes back into the castle. It does, and they're not using tolls from bridges or anything else. So that's pretty impressive that just from sales, they've been able to restore this. They placed hearts, so every bench you notice has a heart on the back. And so George actually put a lot of hearts around through here. It was Heart Island. Yeah. And he never returned here after his wife died. Aww. Never came back. Couldn't do it. Left it. Basically, vandals took over, and uh, that's pretty interesting. He never, he was heartbroken. Aww. And it was hers, and he didn't want to come back. Beautiful. And we got a perfect day, I tell you. I hope she had a maid. Oh, this must be her. You don't have like an audio tour or something you really don't even know what you're looking at so yeah definitely do the free guide if nothing else and then yeah, do the free app it's it's uh worth it yeah because you 
There's no like little bring, placards. Bring a headset too, that way you can listen to it. Uh, right. Versus putting it real quiet, your phone up next to your ear. So bring a headset so you can actually hear it uh, pretty clearly. Yeah. And not interrupt everybody else. Yeah, there's no placards, you know, set up everywhere for you to know what you're looking at or why or. Pretty much a love story, I think. The caretaker of New York's high society. His name was George Bolt, and he would go on to create Bolt Castle. George's Sanctuary. This bedroom has a handsome carved mantelpiece featuring the heart-shaped Bolt family crest. Otherwise, it's fairly simple, especially compared with the grand hall outside. George probably wouldn't have spent much time here. He used his bedroom mostly for a few hours of sleep each night. Some people wonder why this room has only a single bed. Louise would have slept next door. Wealthy married couples often had separate bedrooms. They served as a status symbol and provided privacy for dressing and grooming, which George did with the help of his valet. Now go next door to Louise's suite. George's only daughter, Louise Clover Bolt, was named after her mother, but most people called her by her middle name. Clover inherited her mother's outgoing nature and business sense, and her father's determination to exceed other people's expectations. For instance, she was the first woman in this area who not only competed, but placed first in speedboat races. If you visit the Bolt Yacht House today, you can see one of her favorite boats, the PDQ, which stood for Pretty Damn Quick. But Clover was made general executor and manager of all the time. how you look if you don't bring your earbuds. <laughs> Imagine entering this graceful dining room at sunset. The windows at the far end and the patio outside had a perfect view of the golden crimson sky. What better place to enjoy a sumptuous meal? No matter how delectable the food would surely have been, the rituals of formal dining could be fraught with peril. As a consummate hostess, Louise Bolt spent weeks planning parties, putting her personal stamp on the guest list, menu, seating arrangements, and after-dinner entertainment. She monitored the conversation at the table. If you raised a questionable topic, she swiftly redirected the discussion or provided comic relief before you embarrassed yourself any further. With 24 utensils at each place setting, using the correct silverware presented another hurdle. Track 9. Bolt Cuisine. State-of-the-art equipment and amenities. This enabled the kitchen help to prepare gourmet meals using meat and vegetables from George's Farms on nearby Wellesley Island. The same ingredients he shipped to his club and hotel restaurants, but even fresher here at the source. The chef would have prepared three meals a day for the family and staff, in addition to elaborate nine-course dinners, with choices of menu for the refined palates of the guests. Built in 
to the brickwork? We're not sure, but this could be a tribute to the Thousand Islands, since the Roman numeral M stands for 1,000. I'm telling you, in the clouds today, I'm hoping the pictures look amazing. How much back when? Tell me again. $2.5 million dollars back in 1900. And I have no idea how to calculate what that's worth today, but Get you lost here. it's a lot. All right, so that was the inside of the house and they had a lot of servants. So I can imagine with all those rooms, you would have had to have servants. If you have this big of a house, you better have some help. That's all I'm saying. You know, we live in like 300 50 square feet. And uh, the servant quarters are actually pretty nice. Yes, yeah, that he had come from a hard-working guy serving people, so he wanted to take care of his servants. So they had some pretty great quarters. Yes. Yeah, so did you catch that about the separate bedrooms? I they had separate bedrooms because that was status with the millionaires yeah, back in the day. Yeah, it was a status thing, and we're not millionaires, so we, we don't have separate bedrooms. <laughs> our, I said our entire RV would be smaller than one of these bedrooms. True. Although his wasn't very big. Hers was a little bigger. They said he didn't sleep in his much. He would come over to hers. Yeah. But they had their own because he would dress. With his butler's help, he would get dressed and stuff. So they had their own little space, you know, space. Yeah. And she needed more room because of all the stuff she had to put on, is what it said. Mm. Which we know they did. God bless them you know, in the day. One thing interesting, too, was he liked the number 13. So he would do a lot of things with the number 13. 13 people on the job. His office was on the 13th floor at the Waldorf. He had a special suite. It was called 1313. So he 13 is 13. It? Yeah, it's not bad luck after all, is yeah, it? Yeah, it's not. I mean, not for them back then. He didn't actually have a calendar like when he worked, a schedule. So he just got up and did his mail and checked that kind of stuff, answered any questions, and then he would just take care of customers. But what he didn't have, social media and email. Easy. In many ways, very lucky. You won't be alone out here on this tour. I can tell you that. It's popular and beautiful, affordable, so you'll see many people coming out. That boat is full. This place is super amazing, and literally for $15.50, you do this whole... I mean, it's amazing. Like... New Schwanstein Castle overseas. Amazing. It yeah, it's amazing. Absolutely. That's what I keep thinking about, trying to compare it. This place is beautiful. Yeah, it's amazing. And good for the Port Authority or whatever to use all the money to go back into. It's beautiful. It's not ridiculously priced. You get the boathouse, the castle. I mean, good on them. Thanks, Thousand Island Port Authority. Port Authority. Seriously, this place is amazing. And it's the Thousand Island Bridge Authority, not Port Authority. So we wanted to correct that. Um, they use all the money to keep this place up and beautiful. Lots of ways to get out here to see this. Half day, full day. They have a tour with lunch. That gets you to a lighthouse as well as this castle. So listen, if you're ever in upstate New York, get over here. It's amazing. So there it is. The Thousand Island Bridge Authority. It's like a little historical. So it has all the photos. Here's Alexandria Bay. That's where you need to come. Thousand Islands and Alexandria Bay. I guess if you come in from the Canadian side, there is a, right over there, you'll see the U.S. Customs and Border Patrol, so maybe they have to show something. All right. I feel like this was the playhouse. Got your B for the bolts.
quite a playhouse. All right, to the boathouse. This area you got to come to see the boat house, uh, the boat castle and the yacht house. Well worth the $15 it cost us and uh, it is gorgeous. Yep, seatbelts on. Until next time, seatbelts on. <laughs>